Hello everyone, it's Terry Murphy from Young Artists Family Workshops. Um, I'm here today with my dog and she promises to be good and not to bark. Well, today's workshop is Shadow Puppets and it is the Indonesian art actually of creating characters and putting on a shadow play with them. So in your kit, uh, you received a little placard that names the program. You have two sheets of black paper that we are going to draw our dragon on. And then you have sample pictures of dragons that you could use or you can do something out of your memory. Um, we have two sticks that we will maneuver the dragon with. And then you have a tiny um, bag of jewels and sequins, a couple of golden brads that we will um, make the dragon movable with that, and then um, a little push pin, so watch out because that's sharp. In addition to those supplies, what I hope you have at home is a pencil and scissors and a supply of colored pencils. So, let's get started with shadow puppets. She was good. Weiyang Kulit is a traditional form of puppet shadow play originally found in the cultures of Indonesia. The puppets are made of leather and carved and painted with intricate designs. The Weiyang Kulit performance is a traditional story handed down through generations of conflict, reconciliation, and friendship. So let's begin by drawing our dragon shadow puppet. I did supply some samples you can use or you can work out of your imagination. It goes from simple to sort of intermediate to really complex. Um, and these are Chinese dragons which make for a nice sort of flowing puppet. We are going to use um, these two black pieces of paper to make a really long animal. So. Um, when you're drawing this, I want you to think um, that we will be um, drawing it and creating it in sections, basically where you want to cut it apart and connect the two with a little golden brad. Um, that is where your puppet is going to bend when you move the sticks. So in this example, I have a br just one bread here, but I also have one on the tail, so you can position the tail in different ways. So I think I'm just going to use my innate uh, imagination and um, probably borrow some ideas from these drawings. So when I said um, you're going to use both of these to make a really long ser serpent, half of it will be here and half of it will be here, and then we are going to connect the two so they are movable. So let's just get started. Um, I'm just going to sort of outline a basic shape here, and so maybe a head. Mm, you might have to use something different. I guess the regular pencil isn't going to work that great for us, so um, just go into your colored pencils and get either a white or a gray or any light color, really, a yellow. Um, just remember you're not going to be able to erase, so start lightly, and let's do the first half of the dragon, and I am just doing like shapes here. You know, so we want some thickness to the body. Um, we don't want it to be too snake-like. And then um, this is going to be the head, this is going to be the body. I'm going to have maybe some arms here. Do, they, do we call them arms or feet? I guess they would be feet. And I'm just sort of enclose it here to know that we are going to continue on this side with the rest of his body. 
So you do something like this with his other feet here. I don't know why it, it became a boy, but I guess it is. And I hope you can see that. Um, what else is missing? Um, because I want a movable tail, I am going to draw that separately. So the body sort of ends with the beginning of a tail. And then here, um, you can just draw the tail uh, in, you know, separate from that body but sort of going up into maybe uh, an arrow. Serpents usually have that type of tail. So uh, what else I would like are just some wings. And they don't have to be large wings, um, but just something to show that this creature is probably either a diving creature or a flying creature. So because I have the most area of paper on this side, I'm gonna draw the wings on this side. I'm just gonna flip it over and create some wings that I am going to put over here. So just really simple wings, okay. So if you can imagine it, th this wing is going to be over here. Now we're going to add a little bit of detail. And be careful with the detail because everything you draw, you're going to have to cut up. So if you get too um, involved with the detail, remember you're going to have to cut it out with scissors. Um, so let's do some sort of mouth. You can look on your samples, you know, because, because they're dragons, I like to add a lot of pointy features, so maybe, and, and now you can st sort of press harder, so maybe a mouth with like a pointy area. A lot of times they have like little beards. Chinese dragons do anyway. So see, I'm keeping it very simple. Maybe we'll put some teeth up here to make it look um, a little vicious. And we'll put detail into this dragon with our jewels and with our colored pencils. But for right now, we are just drawing. I'm going to color these sharp claws later. And I could have made these movable too, but we only have so many brads. Um, if you have brads at home, you may try and do that. And then up here, and up here, uh, maybe oftentimes they have these little... I don't know, flowy things here. So what else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little circle here, which is where we're gonna make a hole to put the bread through. Don't make it too close to where you're cutting it, um, but maybe at least a half inch away. So on the second one, same thing. We're just gonna make a little rounded area so they can go together well. And I'm going to put the little hole here so they fit together nicely. Let me think about that. Um, I'm probably going to move that hole uh, so it looks like the body connects better. So that hole is probably going to go over here. So no to that hole because we're looking for a nice connection to flow from here to here without um, these interrupting the flow too much. So back to here, and I think I'm just going to keep it nice and simple and just put some claws here. Leave the detail 
to the um, drawing of it. Back up here. Once again, um, you know, we are going to put this wing here, so I don't want to do too much in this area, but you might be able to get away with putting some little scale triangles here and maybe a, some more here. Um, once again, a little hole here. A little indication of where we're going to put a hole, and then uh, finish drawing. And finally, this wing. So, this wing is going to be up here, and let's figure out where those holes are going to be right now. Okay, so we have our entire dragon drawn. And um, like I say, you, you might add detail to it when uh, we start cutting out. Maybe we'll have this going all the way through. And um, what else we're going to do is cut some holes and some shapes and some designs into this later so the light will shine through when we do our shadow play but for right now we are ready to cut I think our dragon out so let's go get a pair of scissors and let's cut this fella out we should get a name for him Okay, back to cut this out. Um, any household scissors will do. Um, I also have these very tiny scissors that I love. They're made in Italy um, for some little detail, but you know, you can do the same thing uh, with large scissors. So let's go ahead and cut this out. You hear my dog outside. She sees me through the window. And she can't believe I am having fun without her. So she thinks a, a cute little bark will get me outside, but she's going to have to wait. So, and a lot of times I just like to um, turn the paper when I'm cutting. I find it easiest. And also I like to just go ahead and cut a lot of this large areas away because it's easier to cut paper when you don't have big areas like this uh, sort of impeding your progress. So just go ahead and cut through this and um, I'll show you that you know you can just as easily use these big scissors or these small scissors if you have smaller scissors to cut all this detail. Just get some nice sharp scissors is what matters. So I'll go back when I have all the pieces cut out and I'll tell you what to do next. Okay, now here we have all the pieces of the dragon. Um, so when we put it together, it will look like this. Well, we may flip the tail this way. Um, so I left this uh, still uncut a little bit because if you um, 
either have this at home or you know somebody that has these um, crafty scissors that cut into a pattern, you can use this also to cut very easily. And it'll make a nice pattern for your dragon. But you don't have to do this only if you have access to these. Otherwise, you can use your scissors, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. So, um, now in addition to making this beautiful outline of our cuts and designs, um, one other thing you can do is most people have hole punchers in their house. So you can use a hole puncher to make designs in your dragon and also you can use this hole punch to punch where we're going to put the dragon together. Now right now I'm going to say we're only going to put so this only goes so far, so I can't get it all the way up to that hole. Hopefully that'll be okay. Um, and go ahead and place those. Where are we going to put these brats? So there we go. And I'll just show you, I'll just put one in to show you how we're going to put it together. So, here's one, and then we're going to take the bread and push it through, flip it over, pull these apart, and what we want to do is just tape it on um, one of the pieces of paper. So don't tape it across both of them. And we'll just tape it down because we don't want it to move. Okay, so on both sides. And just remember to stay on one piece of paper. And then you can see how that's going to move. Okay? So I'll leave that together. The rest of the stuff we're going to decorate first. And here are some other... Riley, go away! Go away down! Here are some other um, little interesting hole punches. So once again, if you have these at home, little butterfly or a heart. What's this one? An X. Or just a smaller version of a hole. In my live classes, I, I have these for everybody to use, but unfortunately, we're still doing videos, so um, you can go ahead and use that. Or, what can we do if we don't have that? Well, we can still make designs. And one way you can do that is to take some paper towels and wrap them up very thickly so they're um, a quarter inch to a half inch and we have household items that we can use to make holes. So this is a Phillips, very tiny Phillips screwdriver and we would just take this and just keep turning it, turning it, turning it until we get a hole so we can decorate our creature that way. Now remember to leave room for coloring too I'm just showing you all the possibilities now. This I got out of my kitchen, so this is what you put in a turkey when you lace it up. Um, turkey, tr when the turkey is trussed. And 
you can just put a whole bunch of these and make a shape. I made sort of a, a circle there. A staple remover makes a nice design. So it sort of makes double holes. Okay. So that's all I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go into coloring it now because we don't want to forget that we want it to look nice when light shines through it and also in the daytime. So I'll be right back with some colored pencils and some glue to put on our jewels. Okay, and before we start coloring actually, I think I'm going to place as many holes as I can and designs um, with tools you might have at home. So hopefully everyone has at least a hole punch. And um, the reason we're doing this is because we do want to see some light shining through when we do our shadow plays. So however you can make holes is fine. And I'm not going to use the fancy one because not everybody has that. If you do have some fancy hole punches, feel free to use them. Otherwise, we are just going to use regular household items. Um, I forgot that we do have this little pin in here that I supplied with the kit. So we can go ahead and use that. Put some protection underneath in case you're working on a table. Um, and so this is fun just to make a little area that is just full of tiny pinholes that will shine through. It's very effective and especially um, around the face if you want to do, for instance, I'm going to pop out the white of the eye here. And maybe a little eyebrow area. And just go through the whole thing making little dots or little shapes. Oh, I think someone's coming to visit me. I can hear them in my driveway. So I'll be back and actually I'll, I'll put some more um, dots in this thing and pinholes and show them to you before we start coloring. And here's the shadow dragon all put together. Um, <clears throat> let me just say that um, when you tape it on back, it's okay if you just tape one end. I'd rather have you do that than, you know, try and tape onto another piece of paper, which would sort of uh, negate our efforts in making it movable. So here it is. And um, <clears throat> we'll be putting these sticks on it last. But in the meanwhile, I just wanted to show... Um, what we did as far as letting light through the, the dragon. And uh, I'm going to come back after this is fully co colored. Um, and you can maybe just put this video on hold and you color yours and I'll color mine. And we'll see um, just how it goes, you know, in, in order that I don't influence you and uh, too much as far as trying to do what I'm doing. I'd rather color this, you color yours, and then let's see how it works out. Okay? So turn the video off or put it on hold and let's start coloring.
Okay, here's the dragon, fully colored. I left a lot of black on it because, after all, it is a shadow creature. Um, and if I angle it a certain way, hopefully you will be able to see the light coming through it. Um, last thing we're going to do is glue some of these jewels on it and then finally put on the sticks and try out a shadow play. So as far as jewels and sequins go, um, you can use all of them, you can use some of them. Um, you will need to use Elmer's glue. I would just say put a dot on it and put the jewel on top and let it have a good drying time. With both the sequins and the jewels, there are some jewels that have an adhesive backing to a sticky part, and that one you can just put on, and hopefully it'll stay there. Let's see. Yes, it stays there. So I'll um, pretty this guy up. You do the same to yours, and then um, I will come back and we'll put the um, sticks on it to make it a removable dragon. But let's go on and make this guy spectacular. Okay, here's the dragon, fully colored. I left a lot of black on it because, after all, it is a shadow creature. Um, and if I angle it a certain way, hopefully you will be able to see the light coming through it. Um, last thing we're going to do is glue some of these jewels on it and then finally put on the sticks and try out a shadow play. So as far as jewels and sequins go, um, you can use all of them, you can use some of them. Um, you will need to use Elmer's glue. I would just say put a dot on it and put the jewel on top and let it have a good drying time. With both the sequins and the jewels, there are some jewels that have an adhesive backing to a sticky part. And that one you can just... Put it on and hopefully it'll stay there. Let's see. Yes, it stays there. So I'll um, pretty this guy up. You do the same to yours and then um, I will come back and we'll put the um, sticks on it to make it a removable dragon. But let's go on and make this guy spectacular. Okay, here's the dragon, fully colored. I left a lot of black on it because, after all, it is a shadow creature. Um, and if I angle it a certain way, hopefully you will be able to see the light coming through it. Um, last thing we're going to do is glue some of these jewels on it and then finally put on the sticks and try out a shadow play. So as far as jewels and sequins go, um, you can use all of them, you can use some of them. Um, you will need to use Elmer's glue. I would just say put a dot on it and put the jewel on top and let it have a good drying time. With both the sequins and the jewels, there are some jewels that have an adhesive backing to a sticky part. And that one you can just... Put it on and hopefully it'll stay there. Let's see. Yes, it stays there. So I'll um, pretty this guy up. You do the same to yours and then um, I will come back and we'll put the um, sticks on it to make it a removable dragon. Okay, here is the fully colored, fully jeweled and bedazzled shadow puppet. Flying Sea Serpent. I think he's very handsome. Um, okay, so now let's put on these sticks. And basically, 
you just want to put on these sticks so you can control this movement right here. The wings you just control by hand, also with the tail. Um, so you would flip this over and we're going to tape it. Now you can use regular scotch tape like we've been using or if you have any black electrical tape this will reinforce it also. So I am just going to um, find a good place for it and I think right here would be a good place. So I am going to tape it right here. You can put more than one piece of tape but since I'm going to use this black tape too I'm going to show you um, how to do that. And then this one I think we're going to put right here. So, that little. There's some jewels on the other side of that so it's not a flat surface. Okay and then with the tape you just um, do the same thing. This is, this I think is actually duct tape, but a very slender piece of duct tape. So, you know, and if you have duct tape at home, sometimes it's gray, you can just cut it to a smaller width and that would work fine too. So, here we go. This would be the action of the shadow puppet flying through the air. And we're going to wait till it gets a little darker and put a light element uh, to this and see what kind of shadow we can project onto the wall. So now, just a matter of waiting till it gets dark. See you in a bit. Well, now that we made this beautiful shadow puppet, let's put on a shadow play. All you need is a source of light, like a flashlight. This is a high beam one, which works best. And let's start having fun. The closer you get to your source of light, the bigger the dragon grows. So, let's have fun, let's have a good time with our dragon puppet, and this is Terry Murphy from Young Artists Family Workshops, wishing you happy flight, and hope to see you again.